The world of subatomic particles, though foundational to our reality, remains hidden from plain sight due to its unimaginably small scale. These particles, such as electrons, quarks and neutrinos, are minuscule fractions of an atom's size. Light, which we rely on for vision, interacts with objects only at a certain scale, making these particles virtually invisible. This hidden realm, operating at the quantum level, challenges our everyday perceptions, highlighting the remarkable complexities that exist within the structure of our universe. But a recent outstanding discovery has opened a door to this invisible world. The Nobel Prize in Physics for 2023 has been awarded to Pierre Agostini, Ferenc Krauss and Anne Louillier for their groundbreaking contributions to the field of attosecond physics. Their research has revolutionized our understanding of the subatomic world, allowing us to see previously invisible movements of electrons. Let us delve deeper into this Nobel Prize-worthy discovery and explore the significance and historical context of this work. To grasp the importance of this achievement, we first need to understand the fundamental role of electrons in the behavior of matter. Electrons are subatomic particles that orbit the nucleus of an atom, governing chemical reactions, electricity, and much more. But observing the movements of electrons was akin to chasing a bullet with the naked eye. Electrons move at incredibly fast speeds, making them impossible to see with conventional methods. Furthermore, the interactions of electrons occur within the atomic realm, which is inherently complex and difficult to access directly. To observe these rapid movements, scientists require specialized tools like ultra-fast lasers capable of emitting femtosecond pulses. Here's an example of why it is so difficult to observe the motion of electrons. When you take a picture, the camera's flash emits a burst of light that illuminates the scene for a split second. This light bounces off the objects and enters the camera's lens. This process happens incredibly quickly. In just a fraction of a second, the camera sends out the flash, captures the light bouncing off the objects, and turns it into a picture. This is how we're able to capture the motion of an object. Imagine trying to capture the blur of a hummingbird's wings with a regular camera. Well, it's almost impossible. But with a high-speed camera taking thousands of pictures in a fraction of a second, we can freeze those wings in mid-flap. Similarly, to capture the motion of a bullet, the light pulse would need to be on the order of microseconds, which is about millionths of a second. But to capture the motion of subatomic particles like electrons, we need an even faster light pulse. For example, when light interacts with matter, the process occurs on the order of femtoseconds, which is about 10 to the power of minus 15 seconds. And to capture the complex dynamics of how electrons react to this interaction within that time frame, we would need light pulses on the order of attoseconds. An attosecond is an incredibly brief unit of time, one quintillionth of a second, or 10 to the power of minus 18 seconds. To put this in perspective, if we were to divide a single second into attoseconds, it would result in a mind-boggling number. One second contains one quintillion attoseconds. This scale of time is so minuscule that it's beyond our direct perception or measurement using conventional clocks. Attoseconds find their significance in the realm of ultrafast physics, a field that delves into processes occurring at the scale of atoms and subatomic particles. They allow scientists to observe and understand the incredibly rapid movements and interactions of electrons within atoms. This journey began at the end of the 20th century when technological advances in laser physics opened up new frontiers in studying the microscopic timescales on which atomic and subatomic processes unfold. In 1925, Werner Heisenberg argued that the world of electrons could not be observed. This claim brought many uncertainties into the world of quantum physics. In the 1980s and 1990s, researchers made significant progress in generating ultra-fast laser pulses on the order of picoseconds, which is about trillionths of a second. 
and femtoseconds, which is about quadrillionths of a second. These breakthroughs led to profound exploration of the behavior of electrons, which occurs at speeds far greater than previously accessible to scientific observation. As the 21st century dawned, a pioneering group of physicists led by Dr. Ferenc Krauss and Dr. Reinhard Kienberger at the Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics in Germany embarked on a quest to further push the boundaries of ultra-fast science. Their goal was nothing short of capturing events on the attosecond scale. And the breakthrough came in the early 2000s, when this visionary team successfully generated attosecond pulses, using a simple process called high harmonic generation. In this method, first of all, they create attosecond pulses with the help of different frequencies of waves. These attosecond pulses are then sent towards the atoms to observe the movement of electrons. Here's how it's done. So, uh, in order to generate very short pulses, you need all these different uh, overtones. And I will illustrate this now by assuming that we have a number of, of light. We have diff light with different frequencies. As you can see here, light with different frequencies. And if we now let these different frequencies interact and, and uh, interfere, what can happen is that they interfere in such a way that at certain points we create an amplification, whereas at many other points there is destructive interference, nothing happens. And what you get is a pulse train of attosecond pulses. So the trick is really to sum up many different overtones that gives you the bandwidth. But that's for one atom. Now we are talking about several atoms, and several atoms must work together in phase, otherwise it won't work. And it's the same with the symphony orchestra. If each member of the orchestra would be playing whatever they want, the audience would just experience noise. But if they play in sync, and of course you have the conductor making them play in sync, then we get music. And it's the same with the atoms. They have to work in sync. And this was figured out by Anne Lulier and others how to do this. Here is an example of an experiment, autosecond experiment. And this gives you a little bit of a feeling for uh, the length scale of such an experiment. It's not an enormous uh, big experiment. And what you see down here in the corner is laser light, let's say infrared laser light coming in. The laser beam is divided in two parts. One part goes to the left and then into the gas jet, where you produce uh, autosecond pulses. The other part goes into a delay line, so that you can shift the time difference between the autosecond pulses and the infrared pulses. And then you combine them on a, on a mirror and send them into your experiment. And out comes electrons that you can observe. And this was the technique, or a similar technique, that was developed by Nobel laureate Pierre Agostini. He developed something called the rabbit technique. He could show that he could not only produce autosecond pulses, but he could also measure the width. And it, they turned out to be 250 autoseconds. And this experiment was done in Paris, Saclay, in 2001. Almost at the same time, the other laureate, Ferenc Krauss, developed a streaking technique, which is a little bit different, but similar principle, and he produced so-called isolated attosecond pulses, 650 in pulse width. And this was done in Vienna in 2001. And these two platforms are the existing platforms in attosecond physics up to this day. Of course, the experiments have been improved much, but it's basically these two different techniques that are in use. And the choice, RABBIT, which stands for um, reconstruction of attosecond beating by interference of two photon transitions. But, uh, uh, so depending on the application, you decide, do you want to use a pulse train with the rabbit technique, or do you want to use isolated pulses with the streaking technique? And what you can see here is that you have the attosecond pulses, uh, uh, overlap with infrared propulses, 
atom ionization, the electron coming out, and you get a signal which is a replica of an attosecond pulse. So by measuring this electronic signal, you can get a, a, an understanding of what is the pulse width. What can you do? Well, here is an example of how one can study a photo emission delay. The question here arises. Let's take a neon atom. Let's expose it to an attosecond pulse. And the question is, if the electron is in the 2s, more tightly bound in the atom, or if it's more loosely bound, like a 2p electron, do they come out with the same, at the same time? No, they don't. It was actually possible to figure out, by doing these experiments, that one electron goes faster out by 20 attoseconds, an inc incredibly short time that was actually possible to measure. And this was an experiment done in Lund. The impact of this achievement was seismic. For the first time in human history, scientists had an instrument capable of directly examining the incredibly fast movement of electrons within atoms and molecules. This proved Heisenberg wrong, who previously believed that we could not see the world of electrons. This new capability revealed a world of phenomena that had long been hidden from human observation. Since this important discovery, the field of attosecond science has flourished, with research teams around the world building on these foundations to delve deeper into the ultra-fast processes that control the behavior of matter. This has led to advances in many scientific disciplines, from physics and chemistry to biology and materials science. Understanding the ultra-fast dynamics of electrons allows us to manipulate matter at its most fundamental level. The 2023 Nobel Prize in Physics, awarded to Pierre Agostini, Ferrand Krauss and Anne Louillier, marks a pivotal moment in the history of science. Their contributions in the field of attosecond physics have allowed us to witness the previously unimaginable, shedding light on the ultra-fast world of electrons.